the party master on Up and Go. Today is the 10th, the 10th day in the month of December. If you're wondering what day it is, it's Friday! Today is the day when we have two international connections. One at 8.45 with our friends at G98.7 in Toronto, Canada. And we'll be live in Toronto at that time while they will be live in Jamaica. And then at uh, 10.13 this morning when we make that uh, global connection with uh, New York City and Ivory Jam Radio. At that time we'll be live in the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey and Connecticut. While we'll also be live here in Jamaica. Of course, uh, we got a hail from three young youngsters. I don't think you, you know that they're on the building, three young young ladies. Like, uh, I don't think they're teenagers as yet. They are the daughters of one of our colleagues, who I had the pleasure of uh, saying hello to recently. But this morning, I just saw these three little girls in one of the, uh, uh, you know, departments, and I just said, hello, morning. And I heard, that's what you mean. So I said, yeah, that's me. I heard, Richard! <laughs> and we're talking about Charis, we're talking about Joanna and Paula Ann. And they're somewhere in the building right now hearing their name called, and I'm sure that they're screaming their heads off. Good morning, really nice to meet you. Sean's daughter's in the building. Right now then, it's 7.04 and a half. It's Friday morning, the start of the weekend. We're going to make it happen big time. We're here to get you up, to get you fed, get you dressed and out, to work, school, or play. What the fact is on right now, WTF, Santa, we understand, has a postal code in Canada. Now, if you're in Canada and you want to become pen pals with Santa Claus, you can send him a letter via the Canada Post mail system. Did you know that? The address? Listen carefully. You might want to note it if you want to make a contact with Santa Claus. The address is Santa Claus. North Pole Ho -ho -ho, Canada <laughs> You want the address again? Santa Claus North Pole Ho -ho -ho, Canada And don't be surprised when you get a letter back He has some helpers who keep up with his correspondences What the fact WTF Santa Claus has a postal code in Canada now we know. Hey, by the way, there's uh, news coming uh, to us this morning that some researchers, DJ Audley, um, have conducted a survey and a, and a study, and they have now determined that mixing Pfizer, AstraZeneca COVID shots with Moderna, mixing Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and, COVID, uh, and, and Moderna shots can give individuals a better immune response. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's, that's the latest research that's coming out now. Out of the United Kingdom, by the way. <laughs> my, my team inside of the studio don't seem to be taking this one very well at all. We have been told otherwise for, for, for the most mm -hmm. part. Now, a major British study into mixing COVID-19 vaccines has found that people had a better immune response when they received a first dose of AstraZeneca or Pfizer shots followed by Moderna nine weeks later according to re the, the results of this, this um, research that was recently concluded. They say we found a really good immune response across the board. In fact, higher than the Threshold set by Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines, two doses. That is what Mr. Matthew Snap, the Oxford professor behind the trial, has now told us. The findings supporting flexible dosing will offer some hope to poor and middle income countries, which may need to combine different brands between first and second shots if supplies run low or become unstable. So, that is a new development. I'm sure we'll be hearing more about this from uh, our own local health authorities. But, according to the study coming out of the United Kingdom this morning, they're saying mixing Pfizer, AstraZeneca with Moderna shots could increase your chances as it relates to better immune responses. What's your first reaction? 
Wow. <laughs> because no, um, we were told basically not um, not to mix that. Don't mix, mix a this match. thing. Don't mix a match. Don't mix a match. Yeah. Now, research is saying something totally different. Are we going to embrace this research, or are we going to just shove it aside? We'll find out as time progresses. We're breaking it to you this morning right here on Up and Go. It's 25 now before the hour of 8 o'clock. There are a number of shooting incidents in Kingston yesterday. Um, I heard about one up uh, in Ligony side, right? Um, is it Papine or Ligony? Which one? Ligony, okay, okay, yeah. And then there's another. Um, I think a, a petty thief who snatched somebody's phone and then uh, in trying to escape... Uh, Whilst in pursuit by the police, I understand that uh, he jumped into uh, a gully, injured himself, and was apprehended. Please, people, be careful and look out for these uh, petty thieves who come out, especially at this time of the year. You can't be out there walking on the road, um, on your wa- talking on your phone, not looking around to see what's going on. You're setting yourselves up because there are many petty thieves who are lurking and will pounce upon you, all right? A word to the wise is sufficient. Right now, it's time for our proverb of the day. Look at the time. It's 10 minutes before the hour of uh, 8 o'clock. We're inside of an hour, brought to you courtesy of KFC Big Deal Today. We still do it big. Enjoy a delicious big deal today because big dreamers need a big deal. It's time now for our proverb of the day. Let's hear it. Narampwid Magako Akuda Bull Muma. The English translation, don't play with a skinny cow. It could be the bull's mother. Hmm, what does this really mean? Let me give you the uh, tra- the explanation or the meaning. Don't underestimate people who may seem weak and insignificant because you don't know what kind of powerful and influential people they have in their corner. No ramp with Magako. I could have bull mama. <laughs> All right. Um, you don't have to know cow la- language in order to understand and appreciate that, or even animal language for that matter. <laughs> yeah, it has a ring to it. No ramp with Magako. I could have bull mama. Christmas is just around the corner, 10th of December already. In this segment, we have an interview that will start the hour. And uh, let me just tell you that Women of Destiny Jamaica Limited is a registered non-profit organization that provides a safe haven for marginalized women between the ages of 15 and 35 years for their purpose awakening. We understand that the organization operates within a faith-based concept to empower a mindset shift for young women to find their God-given purpose. And uh, they do that through a number of initiatives. Uh, They have various activities, including weekly sessions. Uh, They have mentorship programs, bonding excursions, panel discussions, even empowerment workshops that they stage from time to time. Joining us to tell us more about this organization is Olivia Shaw Lavelle, who is the founder and visionary officer for Women of Destiny Jamaica Limited. Good morning and welcome, Mrs. Shaw Lavelle. How are you today? Good morning, Mitty. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Wonderful to have you on the program. First off, what inspired you to start this organization? Well, as you mentioned, it's a faith based so it's that spiritual journey or that spiritual awakening that truly, it was a personal transformation where I was not the most nicest person towards women. I didn't like the women company, but surrendering my life to God, I remember August 2015, I woke up, I looked in the mirror, I looked different, I felt different. And there was this curiosity that couldn't leave my mind as to why the women of my community of Mount Salem seem to be going in the standard that society has dictated for them, which is that, you know, you're going to get pregnant early, you're not going to have a higher education, You're going to bleach your skin. You're just not going to be productive citizens of society. And having that desire of answering what was the problem, I thought after having a session with my family members, so I started at home. Mm -hmm. And discussing that in a safe space, letting them know that I'm a woman just like them, 
we recognized that we had the same challenges, but what made me different was some of the solutions or the resources that I had access to. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, I started sharing my resources with them. And, and, and this was not necessarily financial now, but, uh, but uh, other kinds of resources as well. Definitely not financial. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, now we're at a place where we recognize that even to get funds in your hand, you have to have the mindset of knowing what to do with it. So mm -hmm. it wasn't the financial part. It was seeking out the counseling because I got counseling at a young age as well. Um, it was seeking out the job opportunities and giving them the empowerment. So having speakers come in, to get them in the mindset ready for the job so they don't walk off the job. You know, we had a few of those incidences. <laughs> so we knew that there was work that needed to be done before, you know, there are any form of handles yes. were given. Mm -hmm. So when did you actually open? And, um, and can you say how many uh, ladies you've assisted so far? Well, we started in August of 2015 and... Uh, I can approximate the figure to say that we have impacted more than 500 women across Jamaica and the Caribbean, and it continues to go mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. Fantastic. So, so women come to you. You don't necessarily go to the women per se, do you? Well, we get referrals, so that is one of our main sources of finding our so, uh, members of the organization and then the projects or programs that we promote they do sign up. So most of the time they do come to us or they're referred to us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm hearing about a Canada local fund initiative uh, that you're currently a part of. What can you tell us about that? Oh, so this is our first major funding. Thank you, Canada. <laughs> and we are so excited about that. That project stems from our advocacy program. So last year, I, we did an initiative called Hashtag I Am Her Advocacy Campaign, and that her represents healthy ethnic revolutionary. And so we wanted the survivors of gender-based violence, which is all forms of abuse, we wanted these survivors to recognize that they're not the victims, they're victors because they're still alive, and we're going to help and train them to be healthy. We're going to help them to recognize that they're Jamaican women and they're strong and they should be proud that they're ethnicity. And we are going to start a revolution by speaking out against violence against women and girls. So doing that seven weeks campaign last year, we thought that it was not good to just talk. We want to put our money where our mouth is, but we don't have the money, so we sought the funders. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, getting the women in the mental state of knowing that they're victors, we wanted to give them the tangible resource to actually live in that purpose. And we know the cosmetology field is a profitable one. Mm -hmm. And when women feel good, you know, when they look good, they feel good. And what better way to empower a woman than to give her that skill with her hand that no one can take away from her yeah. in a profitable field. And so we are, fund we are being funded by Canada to support 18 survivors in five cosmetology field areas, mm -hmm. which is natural hair care. So, you know, that's a natural trend that is going. We have protective styling, so, you know, the crochet and the braids. Uh, sugaring, which is an organic form of hair removal, basically is waxing. Waxing is chemical, sugaring is sugar paste, um, and it's organic. And then you have facial skin care and massage. Okay. So we have 18 ladies, five areas, and they're also going to be trained in entrepreneurship. And a course at the UE, and they'll be doing a course at UE called violence and abuse prevention and management so we're preparing them to be advocates themselves mm -hmm. as well as they have these profitable skills okay how do how do women actually sign up for these programs by the way well they can follow us on social media that is where most of our um, promotion or announcement for programs go or they can send us a whatsapp or email or whatsapp is 876 Five six seven eight one eight two. That is eight seven six five six seven eight one eight two, or email at womenofdestinyja at gmail dot com, and on all social media platforms at womenofdestinyja. 
All right. Really, really, really proud of what you're doing. And I uh, hope that you continue to uh, be of service to so many people and uh, to many people, actually, who, who need these services. And uh, it's all about empowering women. And for that, we say congratulations and best wishes going forward. Thanks for talking to us this morning, Olivia. And uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Have a good weekend. That was a chat with Olivia Shaw Lavelle, the founder and visionary officer for Women of Destiny Jamaica Limited. Good morning, Canada. Good morning, G987 fam. What's up, Red? What's up, J Martin? What's up? What's up? What's up? You're bringing sunshine. I can just feel the heat. Yes, especially when we have yeah. like a cold day ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's, cold. Go, it's gonna be a cold day today. Well, not as cold. It's raining, and then tomorrow it's gonna feel like Jamaica. Not really. 15 right. degrees Celsius. So we're excited about that. Everybody's <laughs> gonna be wearing shots. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yes. And we always get busy over here in this weekend. For tonight, Red has her party and event with DJ Ritz at uh, a club in Toronto called Sugar Daddy. Sugar, yes. uh, Sugar Daddy. Sugar Daddy. Did, did Red name that club that? Or, or? <laughs> <laughs> no, it would have been called Sugar Mama. Okay. <laughs> and but you go myself, there every Friday night, right, uh, Red? Every you... Friday we're live here. 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Hey, 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 Jay, have you seen the pics that she posts when she's yes. at that gig? Yes, yes. <laughs> Let me posts. tell you, Every so, Friday uh, night, she has to have the different angles that yeah, come in. And yeah. She pretends like she's not looking in the camera. It's so, it's so evasive. It's so <laughs> you evasive. You guys are so funny. But, Richie, I got to tell you, tomorrow tell night, I'm having my party. I oh, have it seasonal, me. and it's called a Brook Pocket Party. Oh, come on. That, <laughs> that's exactly what it's called. That's for people who don't have their partner draw that come in yet. <laughs> <laughs> they have no little spirit change. Well, I'm I'm, I'm supposed to, to be at the head of the line entering that party. <laughs> come on, Jay. No invitation, man. That's my kind of place. Party party Wait a minute. You're not a sugar daddy? <laughs> no. Nah. No? I was hoping you were a sugar daddy. Oh, no, that is why you'd not see me at uh, at, at your Friday night jam. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be fronted line at Brook Pocket Party. <laughs> so, so, so where is it going to be? Mine's going to be at The View, 195 Galaxy Boulevard in Toronto. It's not far from where Red's is. But, uh -huh. yeah, we're going to be partying up this weekend and having a good time. Clear yes. up one thing, though. Are you giving away free liquor? Because if it's Brock Party, Pocket Party, then people might not have a lot of cash. What's happening no, with that? They, they give a discount on that because okay. it's not Jamaica where, where it flies that well. Uh, <laughs> you get we're arrested? We're by the LCBO here. So please don't have me lose my job yeah. twice. Shout, out to, uh, <laughs> shout out to the LCBO. Yes, and, uh, the law of liquor in right? Canada. Yeah. But they're going to get free food from pull-up chef he's gonna have you okay. know mm. um some festival Sounds and good. fried dumpling and wings oh, and Lord. red pea soup you know how we do next week mendetta next year <laughs> next year mendetta trust me um but but what let me ask you, you a quick into? one let me ask you yeah. a quick one um are you having difficulty in terms of getting some of the popular liquor brands at this time because a number of popular brands are not available here in jamaica are you having that yes. problem yes we're having the same yes. thing a lot of them one of our sponsors at the station three kilos you can't find a bottle of them anywhere in the gta yeah. except jay martin's co uh, closet yeah i have a bag of them at home and i'm not, I'm not <laughs> me too them. so richie when you reach up there you take a shot <laughs> yes i <laughs> all right and the bottle's so. pretty the bottle's really nice too yeah, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. All right, well, we're going to allow you to play some music from your end, and we keep it nice and jiggy. We have some inf uh, information to share in a little while from now. This, of course, is the uh, Canadian Connection, Bridge 99 FM and G987. Let's do it. Take it away, guys. G98.7, great music show, morning show, and of course it's Red and Jay Martin, and we are bridging over to Jamaica. Bridge 99, I gotta shout out Richie B on the other side of uh, Sunshine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on the other side, and you know, I would do anything to trade places right now. The weather yeah. must be so beautiful. Yeah, well, let me tell you what you can do. Um, there's a new airline called Swoop, uh, which is a subsidiary right. of uh, WestJet. And they have just introduced new flights into Kingston. They already are into Montego Bay. So yes. that is what you need to do, Red. Make make I that saw. call today, yeah. I and saw. Let yeah, me you, got, you, you, got all, you got options. <laughs> you can go swoop and it's a wonderful way to travel. Just remember that you have to pay for your bag. If you want a cup of tea, you have to pay for that. If you want a napkin to wipe the tea, you have to pay for that. Who do you to work make for? Sure. Air Canada? If you have to use the restroom. Yeah, yeah. If you have yeah. to use the restroom, do you have to pay as well? <laughs> one flush. Wow. Yeah, one flush. <laughs> they're no, they're no one flush. Protect you. Because, wow. 
<laughs> it's going to cost you the price to go home. Yeah. So each person is allowed Too one much. flush. <laughs> Too much. That is funny, Jay. <laughs> we like to talk about things that, you know, are pretty much topical to our listeners here in Toronto and, of course, Jamaica. And recently, Robbie Shakespeare of reggae duo Sly and Robbie passed away at age 68. Gone too soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on this? I know, I know, it's a, Robbie... It's- it's a monumental loss, um, right. uh, Red, believe you me, and it's uh, it's having a ricochet effect right around the world. Uh, in, even this morning, as a matter of fact, we were checking some of the news portals, and uh, there's just so much being said about this great man. I mean, he made a sizable contribution to our music and culture, mm-hmm. and uh, he has worked with uh, pretty much all of the Jamaican artists and a whole lot of international acts. Uh, too many to mention, Mick Jagger, uh, Madonna, Brit- Britney right. Spears, Cindy Lauper, you know, Bob Dylan... The, the list goes on and on. He wow. was, in fact, ailing for some time and uh, had a couple of surges, we understand, and uh, he lost his battles recently. Uh, the world mourns his passing. Sly is, of, of course, still around, uh, which is right. the other half of the, of they call them the Rhythm Twins. And right. uh, we want to express our condolences to uh, Robbie's family and, of course, uh, to Sly, his uh, big-time musical partner for several decades. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you couldn't find more humble people who have achieved so much. There are two times Grammy winners and, wow. um, and, and, and just an awesome force in the business. Rest in peace, Robbie Shakespeare. Right. I, I also saw one of your news uh, portals out of Canada carrying a big story on him as well. So, you know, it, it's really yes. not just in Jamaica. It's all around the world they're talking about him. True. Right, definitely. I yeah. mean, uh, his music lives on. And like you said, so many artists, when I saw that, when you said like Britney Spears, of course, James <laughs> Brown, Grace Jones, yeah. uh, Pull up to my Simon, bumper, baby. You remember right? that song? Yeah, Grace yes. Jones. Yeah, uh-huh. Peter Tosh, yeah. uh, Toots and the Maytals, uh, Jimmy Cliff, of course. Yeah. Uh, the list just goes on. So, yeah. you know, I, I guess everyone's mourning him, but I'm sure we're going to hear more music and, of course, we're going to cover it more. Most so uh, mm-hmm. I saw this one. Entertainment sector rejoices PM wholeness relaxes Christmas holidays curfew. I forgot that mm-hmm. in the Caribbean there's so many uh, curfews and restrictions. Yeah. Well, how's that looking? And are you ready to party? People are. Well. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. A, but but right. the, tru- the truth is that people are embracing it. Uh, but there is some backlash coming from the health departments who feel that if you slacken the measures a little bit, even a little bit, it might have a, a, a negative impact in terms of the numbers. So they are putting out their argument saying, hey, um, was this really necessary? A um, classic so, case of give them an inch, they take a mile. Yeah, so um, wow. so we have an extra hour um, during the week. And uh, I think on, on New Year's Day and, uh, and uh, Christmas Day and so on, there are some uh, other allowances that have been put in place. But it's not really a, a major, major turnaround, so to speak. It's just a little bit of tweaking that went on. And people, mm-hmm. are, people are seemingly liking it. Right, I'm seeing that. So I'm seeing New Year's Eve as well as Christmas Eve, like you said, till yeah. 1 a.m. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, they always say nothing good happens after midnight. Have you ever heard that saying? Nothing good <laughs> happens after midnight? Well, I midnight? guess for a guy, everything good happens after midnight, right? Well, I, I, I would want to, I would, I'd want to refute that statement because I, I can think of a few past midnights that have been really, really fantastic in my life. <laughs> You're the best, Richie. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, and we're getting a lot of good responses. I just got a message out of uh, Las Vegas. Hey. And there is a lady. Her name is Sharon Walters. She turns 60 today, and she's listening to us right now. Her daughter, Florian, Savannah Florian, to Las Vegas. She says, Richie, please say hello to the uh, Great Music Morning Show team. We're loving the energy. That's what she said. Thank you. Her name is Sharon. Happy birthday, Sharon, from all of us. Yes. yes. Happy birthday, Sharon. And <laughs> Vegas is the spot to be for your birthday if you're not in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, you can turn up. What they say, and, uh, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? That's what I they thought say. that was the same thing of what happens on my trips to Jamaica. <laughs> wow. Hey, who am I to judge? Wow. No, you're trotting on, a, on, on Red's territory on that <laughs> note. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So what else is going on? We were talking about, um, you know, the whole uh, curfew. And then also, Richie, we were also, you were going to tell us about, uh, what were you going to tell us about again? (laughs) 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 We were talking about it. You know, that's what happens. We get in these conversations and there's like so much going on. Uh, We were going to cover something else. You're going to cover something else. It's going to happen shortly. Oh, spice, spice. That's what you're going to cover. Spice. Yes. Mm. 
about Spice. that whole yeah the, you whole mean drama, the Toronto show the whole sue sue no oh. the one where where she's going to get sued and she's oh. like we are gonna sue for sue oh, yeah okay sue then. for sue <laughs> I don't know where it, it, it kind of died down for a little bit and I thought there might have been uh, the attorneys on both sides might have been having a conversation uh, towards oh. a resolution but it looks like it's definitely going forward by the promoters so um, it, wow. it, we, we wait to see what will happen these, well, these, these were people who have worked together um, on a number of occasions before, mm -hmm. and uh, they know each other well. So we're, we're really kind of hoping that um, there'll be some kind of resolution without the, 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 the whole court matter and, and so on. You know what I mean? Well, it's, I hope so, too, because I think Spice is walking around saying, I feel a way. And we don't <laughs> want her to feel a way regarding I, I, this. I actually thought she was, uh, she was uh, walking around saying, Scandame! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyway, can I play some music from my side? That's what yes, we're waiting sir. for. Yeah, the spirit us. of the season. We're bringing Christmas cheer, not just here in Jamaica on Bridge 99 FM, but also right across Toronto, Canada on Great Music Morning Show on G987. <laughs> we have so much fun with you guys. I look forward to every Tuesday and every Friday with you, Richie B. Most but I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, what is what are we cooking for Friday night? Right? Friday this night. is our Friday night question. What are we oh, eating for gosh. dinner? You see, the problem is that I'm not the one who determines that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I take what I get. Uh, so, I, I, so so I, I don't know what's on uh, the menu for later, but I know it's going to be something. I think it's going to be some, um, What I, I'm putting it out there now. I'm going to have some uh, uh, some chicken, uh, right. like chicken breast and vegetables. I love nice. that combination. Okay. Like, like a chop suey kind of thing. Nice. Yeah, we, we, we have um, my, my, my family. They, they, they take care of that very well at home. So okay. that might be on the agenda Beautiful. later. Yeah. I think okay. I need a wife. I need a wife or something. <laughs> you do. You do. <laughs> Wait a minute. So what are you going to have for dinner, Jay? Uh, I'm going to do what Richie B did last week. I'm going to order some Chinese. Chinese. <laughs> you guys are too much. I was thinking sushi. I'm definitely, it's Friday. I got sugar daddies. It's it's an ordering kind of day. Okay. It's a, it's a Uber. I have one question day. before I go, though. What's um, that? Red, did you allow did you allow Jay to um, hold on to your hair as we saw him do earlier on uh, on camera? You know what? This w is was like it an assault? Facts. Okay. No, this is this is true. Oh, wow, <laughs> Richie, no, Richie, this ain't this ain't the Caribbean. Them things don't fly. Oh um, no, honestly, this is so no, we're, no, we're sharing joking. we're sharing this camera, and uh -huh. he Jay usually sits all the way in, in over the there. Corner. I don't oh. get to be close. So he's close, and oh. that's the funny thing because I just said to him, "Wow, you're touching my other." Actually, feels good, and I said, "You know, it's so funny. We don't even like touch each other, and the one yeah. time yeah. it's yeah. on camera, we're yeah. socially yeah. We distancing." We saw right? that. Socially distancing. And the, we saw that, and people in the studio here were kind of jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make sure Jamaica realized that it is a real hair. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's no a brotherly fake. love. Not it's fake. a love. It's a yes. family love. That's what it is. Absolutely. So when you saw that, it's a love, you know? Yeah, man. Listen, it was great this morning. We thank you for being uh, allowing us into your space, and we enjoyed having you here. And we look forward to being with you next Tuesday morning at 845. Take care. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Spread love. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. One love. All right. Uh, Bridge 99 FM. Right now, it's time for us to uh, welcome another guest uh, on Up and Go for today. And uh, just to tell you, the committee for the promotion of national religious services, CPNRS, responsible for the planning and promotion of the annual national Thanksgiving services, including the Independence Thanksgiving service, Workers' Week Thanksgiving service, and the Heritage Week Thanksgiving service, received a new chairman uh, as recent as Wednesday of this week. And uh, they had their, their uh, committee's final annual meeting and appreciation ceremony. It was held, we understand, uh, in Kingston at the JCDC's head office and uh, to talk to us more about uh, this new development, new chairman and all of that, Andrea McCurdy, event coordinator at National Religious Services Committee Project, uh, our guest at this time. Good morning, Mrs. McCurdy. Welcome to the program. How are you? Hi, Rich. Good morning. I'm well. How are you? I'm doing well. Season's greetings. To you too. Thank you. Yes. Has it, has it hit you yet that Christmas is really just about a little over two weeks from now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been in Christmas mode from the middle of October, <laughs> right after in, right after um, Heritage Week. Yes, I was I was headlong into it. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's also my birthday. You, you, so I'm you, headlong into it. You beat a lot of people to <laughs> it. <laughs> so by now, all the lights are in, all the pepper lights, all the decoration going on, and all that. 
actually, you know, I'm just enjoying everybody else's own this ah, year. I this see. year, I'm going to, 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 to help my husband manage our light. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because those lights do impact the light bill, does, do, don't they? Do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, on to more serious matters now. The, who is the new chairman of the Committee for the Promotion of National Relig- Religious Services? So the new chairman is Bishop the Honorable uh, Conrad Pitkin, who is the custos of St. James. Um, he's now the new chairman, and he will assume the responsibilities come January 2022. You said Pitkin, right? Conrad Pitkin? Yes. Conrad Pitkin. He's a custos of St. James. Yes, congratulations, uh, uh, custos, and best wishes. Can you share with us this morning, Mrs. McCurdy, what will be some of the responsibilities that the chairman will be asked to per, uh, sort of perform? Well, the chairman really steers the committee um, that gives oversight to the planning and execution of the three main national Thanksgiving services for the year, which take place uh, Workers' Week in May, the Emancipation Independence Season in end of July, August, thereabouts, and also Heritage Week. And so he gives oversight to the committee that helps me. I'm employed at the JCDC as an event coordinator with the responsibility for planning those services in addition to other things. Mm -hmm. And so the committee helps me to pull those services together. We have also done um, an interface services in time past, which includes members of all the faiths, the different faiths, uh, religious faiths that mm-hmm. are present in Jamaica. Yes. And so the committee, along with the Interfaith Council, would help me to pull that together as well. And so the chairman gives oversight to all of that. Mm-hmm. You do have a number of members as well. What, what, who are the members and, and what are some of their responsibilities? Well, it's, it's, it's more of a commu- communal effort, if you would. Uh-huh. The members come from uh, six main the six main church groupings, six of seven mm-hmm. main church groupings, the Jamaica Council of Churches, the Jamaica Evangelical Alliance, the Pentecostal Union Apostolic, uh, Full Gospel Association, Full Gospel Churches, Seventh-day Adventists, and Church of God in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And so the committee, of course, headed by the chairman, pretty much helped me plan the program, what's to happen. Um, they give their, they give their um, opinions on how they think the, the, the program should flow, what kind of interesting tidbits we can insert so that when persons leave, it just doesn't feel like another regular church service, but they leave with something very meaningful and so on. Yes. So the committee helps me to pull that together as well. Do, do you think it, uh, it, it's beneficial to have um, religious leaders from different denominations being a part of this? Absolutely, because we're not just speaking for one set of people. So it is important to hear and to, because the whole, the whole idea behind Christianity is unity. So, so it's difficult to have unity if just one group is doing all the talking. Yes. So certainly within the Christian community, all the major church groupings um, are represented. And uh, together, and over time, as they learn each other, and because we all have to, we all have to work together, so whatever the differences that we have, we it, it does not take away from how we go about planning the services together. And then, so the expressions may be different depending on which group is responsible for what, mm-hmm. because we tend to involve as many in, in each service. So we have different forms of expressions, but certainly pull it together so that it, it shows the diversity in the Christian community. Okay. Next year, uh, we'll be celebrating our 60th anniversary of independence. It's a very, very important yeah. year for us as a nation. Yes, yes. Um, uh, have you started putting together plans for like Thanksgiving and uh, uh, Workers' Week and all these different Heritage Week and so on yet? Well, one thing is pretty clear mm-hmm. for next year, um, as our minister shared with us on, on Wednesday when we had our final meeting, um, is that we are certainly doing an interfaith service this year. So one of the three main services will be an interfaith service. And earlier in the year, probably about October, September, there about I had reached out to one of the members of the the interfaith community. So we know that we're going to be full speed ahead in terms of planning that service as well. So where it will fall remains to be seen in one of those three areas, but it mm-hmm. certainly will be one of the main features of our Jamaica 60 celebration. Yes. Anything between now and the end of the year, as far as the JCDC is concerned, that you might want to share with our, uh, our listeners? 
Um, right now, we are pretty much in high gear. So most of the programs are have wound down for mm-hmm. the, for the, for this year, yes. and finishing out with um, awards for our visual arts competition that would have been held earlier in the year, and so on. Mm-hmm. And so now we're sorting through workshops and everything, preparing for the new cycle come next year. All right. We'll be right here to support you along the way. Thanks for talking to us today, awesome. Andrew Mercury. Have a good weekend and Merry Christmas when it comes. Have a great one yourself and Merry Christmas to you too and the staff at the bridge. Thank you. We appreciate that. We got a, an article that uh, is carried in today's Jamaica Gleaner. Big ups to the crew of the Gleaner. And the heading is... The bridge connects the diaspora. And uh, as soon as I open the, the article on my phone, I see Nikki Z. And I looked again, and I'm seeing DJ Roy. Okay? I looked again, and I'm seeing Dubmaster Chris. Huh. When I took a closer look, you know, Richie, I also saw the team from G987. So I'm like, hey. And then I saw me. <laughs> no, I'm very, I'm, I'm quite prominently um, shown as well. I'm just kidding. So we're all there. A uh, very colorful photograph. And uh, let me just read a portion of the article. In what is being described as the most transformative power play in diaspora radio, the Bridge 99 FM in Kingston, Jamaica, on November 29, began a series of radio simulcasts with G98.7 FM, a leading urban station in Toronto, Canada. Bobby Clark, chairman of the Bridge 99 FM and Irie Jam Radio, who brokered the landmark deal, said negotiations started about a year ago and concluded recently. The groundbreaking simulcast kicked off with the entertainment queen, Nikki that's Nicole Nikizi Duhaney on the Bridge 99 FM and DJ Specs on G987 FM. The simulcast now airs Tuesdays and Fridays from 8.45 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. during Up and Go. I know the name of that show. With veteran broadcaster Odat. <laughs> Richie B. Dempsey. In addition, Nikki Z and DJ Specs will broadcast from 315 to 345 p.m. on Mondays and Thursdays. So um, we're on with the team. You heard them this morning, Red and Jay Martin. 8.45 a.m. Tuesdays and Fridays until 9.15 a.m. Tuesdays and Fridays. And Nikki Z with DJ Specs is on 315 uh, on Mondays and uh, uh, 315 on Thursdays for half an hour um, on the bridge 99 FM so this is now also now news to me and the article carries it in addition Irie jams signature Saturday program primetime Saturdays will be live in Toronto from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. this time slot will not only feature the new the New York icons DJ Roy and the master Chris but there will also be a connection with the sensational DJ Roddy G on the Bridge 99 FM. So we're picking up a lot of information that we're learning for the first time. So here's what the boss said. We are creating history as this is the very first time that three commercial stations from Canada, New York and Jamaica will be simulcasting all in the name of connecting Jamaica with the U.S. Canadian diaspora. It is hugely significant as it allows listeners and viewers in these markets to be connected through a virtual media superhighway that will benefit them culturally. And so this provides uh, uh, opportunities for advertisers. They are the biggest winners in this scenario. Just imagine you have a business selling honey on the sidewalk in Clarendon, says uh, Bobby. You can now solicit customers in New York, in Miami, in Toronto, in London. The bridge will even help to get your goods and services delivered to potential clients in these markets. This applies to all businesses, including lawyers, hotels, Airbnbs, restaurants, doctors, financial institutions, you name it. So it is a major development. And uh, it's carried in today's uh, Jamaica Glena. Again, we say big ups to our friends at the Glena. Five now before the hour of 10 o'clock. We call him Jamaica's pride and joy. He's none other than DJ Roy. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Irie Morning. Yeah, uh, come on. Irie Morning, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was on cue. So, how are you doing, Gav? <laughs> I'm doing all right, bro. You're doing good, Gav. I've got yeah. on my Chelsea g- Gansy today, you know. Oh, I'm, you, I'm, you, I'm you representing are. Chelsea. Oh, I see. <laughs> not not Manu. We can't win you over yet. <laughs> it, it, it will never happen. Not in this ever. lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And I've got so many Man U fans around me, so it's just me one. And Oxdale cheer for Chelsea on this side of Irish Jam. Okay? <laughs> but you do have a lot of... Uh, uh, there are a number of fans, I know, in, in, in New York who are Chelsea fans. Every time we talk football here, oh, yeah. we actually um, get a message yeah. or two from them. Especially if I'm trying to be subtle uh, and, and, and big up Man U. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, these these days, Mr. Richie B, you have to be subtle. You're yes. not playing very well, <laughs> so please be subtle. <laughs> I have to be humble too. <laughs> but talking about Here football, DJ Roy, big developments locally. Mm. Um, uh, Whitmore okay. has lost his job. Coach mm. Whitmore has lost his job, and you know who has replaced him? His his uh, his assistant no. coach, Paul Hall who took up the job just since, uh, I think, June of this year. And uh, okay. it, it's it's being discussed a lot in uh, just about everywhere. Many people thought that the team was uh, coming together, gelling well. M- many people thought that we should have won the match against the United States were it not for that yes. goal that was not allowed. And it is now a case where the technical committee recommended to the JFF that it's time for Whitmore to go. And they have. I thought when I, when we heard talk about Whitmore going, that they were going for, you know, maybe one of those uh, coaches who was sacked recently <laughs> in the Premier League or something like that. But they actually are going for uh, Paul Hall, who is a former reggae boy himself and played with uh, Whitmore back in the day. And uh, many people are wondering what will what difference will Paul make at this t- at this stage, especially when the trajectory was the, the reggae boys were improving, playing better, scoring goals, and. Uh, winning or almost winning matches i guess they would say that almost winning matches almost. don't keep your job as a coach <laughs> not at all near mrs that's Dutch. why the man you coach you gotta go yep oh lord you reminded me of that <laughs> the next thing you're going to tell me is that some players must go also <laughs> please don't say ronaldo uh, well, well, i say coach first I okay. think the, the team is bigger than the coach yeah yeah well, so that is that is it for, right. for the local side. Um, we wish Whitmore all the best. Uh, apart from uh, Rene Simoes, he would have been the winningest um, Jamaican coach. And uh, I think uh, I don't think he has anything to be embarrassed about. And uh, we, we just want to wish him well. He's somebody that I have a lot of respect for. And we wish the team well also going forward. All right? We're going to talk to be talking to a guest in a second now, but we haven't said much about uh, Robbie Shakespeare in this segment. But we definitely oh want to just uh, you know reach out to the family and all those Man. who mourn, reach out to Sly yes. and uh, all the connections, a uh, taxi, uh, yeah. taxi label, and just to say, hey, uh, he'll be sadly missed, and we recognize and appreciate and applaud all of his yes. works because he was a truly great Jamaican musician. May his soul rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, the last time I, I I saw him was on the Welcome to Jamar cruise, and oh. uh, me and Bobby Clark was was like eagerly awaiting Sly and Robbie to come off stage <laughs> to take pictures with them. So I'm gonna be posting <laughs> yeah. those pictures. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's kind of amazing, you know, and I guess you know age and maturity has something to do with it. Like when people were running to see Popcorn and people were running to see, I wanted to take pictures with Fly and Robbie mm-hmm. yeah. and Bobby Clark also. So, so um, you know, a legend in his own right, um, his work speaks for himself. Most you know, definitely, um, man. May his soul rest in peace. Missed. Yeah, indeed. All right. Uh, we do have Naomi Cowan joining us right now. Good morning, Naomi. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. How about you? Season's greetings. Thank you. Same to you. I'm doing good, man. I'm happy that we're connecting again about this this time of year. Are you back home? <laughs> yes, I'm back home now. <laughs> I saw you taking over Canada recently. Yeah, I was there for a little bit, bit and did some performances and connected with the community, and it was it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, we, it's, it's we, nice to, to be back in person, you know. We saw some some of the footage, and it really looked like you were having a lot of fun. DJ Roy is also on the on the connection with us. You want to say hi to him? Well, go on, DJ Roy. How you doing? 
Good morning, Paradise Plum. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? I'm well, I'm well, I'm well. I'm good, man. <laughs> Na Naomi, what does Christmas really mean for you? Well, it's funny you ask that question because um, I, don't, I don't even know what Christmas means sometimes because there's just always so much going on, you know. I, I have my thoughts about it, and that's why I wanted to be part of this version of Santa Claus, you come to the ghetto, because I feel like Christmas really should be, if anything, it really should be about coming together and giving thanks for all that has happened in the year and taking account for all of your blessings and whatever that, you know, might look like for you. But sometimes it just becomes so much about spending and, and profiling and, you know, busyness and whatever the case is. And, um, you know, of course, traditionally also it's a celebration of the birth of Christ mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But so for me, I, 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 I actually don't really love this time of year, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but as a musician, I think it's an opportunity to really to use your voice in a special way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So here we are, close to Christmas, talking with you. Who And you have done a remix of uh, your mother's big, one of the biggest Christmas songs out of Jamaica, Santa yeah. Claus, Do You Ever Come to the Ghetto? And you decided yeah. to, to, to do a remake of it. Tell me why. Yeah, so, well, two things. I mean, first of all, this year, actually, it's the 40th anniversary of when my mom and dad first released that song, um, which is a very oh. special occasion. And um, on top of that, I, I I felt as though, you know, well, first of all, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege and a, a big opportunity for me to be able to record with her and re-record a version of her, one of her biggest hits. You know, even though, yes, she's my mom and they're my parents, you know, separate from them being my parents, they're, they're still legendary artists and musicians, you know. So I know for me as a young artist, I I wanted to take advantage of that, if you want to call it, and make sure it's like, no, pass me, because who else is going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. There's that. And then on top of that, when I talked to my dad about what inspired him to write a song and stuff like that, and when I take account of what I see happening around us every year at Christmas time, I feel like, wow, not much has really changed, you know? And it's kind of almost like shocking because we keep thinking like, okay, by this year, things will change. By next year, things will change. But it just feels like the same thing over and over. You know, I was even looking at some um, archival footage of Vox Pop in Kingston, right? You know, um, at the National Library, I was looking at Christmas um, news stories and stuff like that. And hearing people talking about, boy, well, money never run this year, money I run last year, you know, and I just thought to myself, like, wow, it just feels like a cycle that we're in, you know, the economy is, 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 is constantly just causing people to feel hopeless and et cetera, et cetera, but then when this time of year comes around, people won't feel like they need to spend more or they're hoping to earn more or whatever, so I, I just felt as though it was important to refresh the song, um, to remind us as individuals that, hey, there's still a far way for us to go as as a as a society. Mm -hmm. So does does mommy sing on the song as well? Yep, she is on the song as well. And I think I saw I, I saw where a, a DJ was also a part of it, right? Right. Well, I mean, I'm not sure if you remember who DJ Trinity was. Trinity, yes. Oh, yes, I do. He he is part of the original song, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so we kept right. some of his vocals from the recording. So we actually converted the original recording in, and digitized it and utilized a lot of the original instruments. Uh -huh. So, like, wow. the bass was originally played by Lloyd Park. Yes. You know, um, mm. we, we kept the original keyboard. We, we, you know, a lot of the things we actually kept the original because that was important to me. And um, Dean Fraser also played sax on it. And then um, Monty, Alex, Monty, I don't know if you know Monty, who plays guitar, he added some extra guitar, but we kept a lot of the original elements. Mm -hmm. I think Roy has a question for you, yeah? Um, Naomi, do, do, you, do you feel any pressure? You got two stars as parents. <laughs> um, one of the greatest MCs of all the MCs. Yes, indeed. And, and, and your mom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. And, 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 and he, he's so influential to so many artists of that era. Plus your mom, you know, it speaks for itself. Uh, you know, her music speaks for herself. And then her making the transition to gospel music. 
Um, do you feel like you come under any pressure at all when you go into the studio to record, knowing that mom and dad has set such a high standard? Uh, not really, you know, because, um, uh, you know, I, I don't really, well, I don't really personally feel a pressure in terms of standards mm -hmm. because I've learned everything from them, you know, and I've mm. observed everything like from a bond, you know, so I don't really feel a pressure because all I have to do is show up and be myself more than anything. Okay. It's important for me to be as relaxed as possible when I'm in the studio or when I'm on stage or the minute I get nerd, like I get flustered about things, that's when you don't do your best. So I actually okay. don't really feel pressure because, um, as I said, they've always, expose me as best as they can to everything when it comes to this industry and I you know I travel with them and that stuff so I don't feel that kind of pressure per se uh, more than anything mm -hmm. I think I more just feel if you want to call it pressure I just know that I want what I do to to be meaningful to me and the people that I influence you know but that's not so much of a pressure that's just kind of like a mission that's what you do has meaning and it has purpose and you know that um yes. that because that's the goal of an artist at least for me is that the art that you create you hope that it um it plays a role in somebody's life because it plays a role in your life that's why you share it otherwise you might as well keep it to yourself so yeah <laughs> facts <laughs> those are facts Legacy continues. yeah yeah so i don't really feel a pressure um but you know i know it's because also they've really They've really, as I said, they're, they're such amazing people. Like they've really given me as much as they can, and then I've had to decide what to do with it. Yeah, you know? and, you, and exactly. you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Uh, I don't want to put yeah, you yeah, on the I don't. Sure. We don't want to put you on the spot, but could you just sing that line, Santa Claus, do you ever come to the ghetto and allow us to play the song, please, Naomi? Oh, my God. <laughs> you want me to sing? <laughs> just one line, please. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I want to show Jamaica how much she sounds like her mommy because that's how we feel, right, Roy? <laughs> Yes, yes true. indeed. I don't like her. I don't like her. <laughs> uh, this is Naomi Cowan, Santa ladies and gentlemen. Claus, do you ever come to the ghetto? Santa Claus, do you ever wonder why we suffer so? Santa Claus, when will you come to the ghetto? Ghetto! Yeah. That's enough. Let's give her a round of applause. Great talking with you, Naomi. Merry Christmas and a happy new year when it comes. Thank you for being our guest this morning. Yeah, man. Thank you for the conversation. Okay. Every time. One of the things I wanted to uh, do in this segment, DJ Roy, is to congratulate Freddie McGregor on this new oh, deal man. that he has struck with uh, Warner Chapel Music, who will now be in charge of his publishing like they were already in charge of his son's publishing, Stephen McGregor. This is major for Freddie. We say congratulations to the captain. Indeed, indeed. I'm bridging from Clarendon. <laughs> this may be one of the biggest moves that he has made in his career. 40 and, and over he has 40, a catalog. Yeah, for over 40 albums. And now major, major publishing arrangements. And uh, this, uh, this is something that we want to applaud. Now, I've been thinking recently, DJ Roy, you know, I just feel like with all that's going on, the positive things happening with the stations, I felt like I want to do something really big. And I've been thinking, scratching my head and trying to figure out where I want to go. Now, if I tell you that we are about to make an announcement of a guest in one of these segments as early as next week, one of the icons and legends who doesn't do much in, ter in terms of radio interviews has a rich catalog. One of those artists who constantly, up to pre-COVID times and pandemic times, used to tour sometimes 10 months of the year to large audiences, not in clubs, but in stadia and, and, and arenas. We can tell you this morning that within days, we will have the pleasure of an interview with the one and only Burning Spear. You heard? What? You heard? <laughs> what? You heard, DJ Roy? I, I have I sp never <laughs> interviewed Burning Spear. <laughs> we spoke what? to them. Yes. 
we spoke with him. The big man will ah, be on the you. bridge and on Ari Jam very, very, very soon. Richie, all I have to say is this about that announcement. If the news not right about this tomorrow, they done with music. <laughs> if the news don't write about this interview, I'm done with music, Richie. Listen, this is a major interview, and I hope it's an in-depth one. I know that you know when we do the connection, it's time is upon us. But man, the history that that gentleman has worldwide, man, that's a big interview, my friend. Yes, I, I, sir. I, I'll be listening. Yeah. It is going to happen. Thank you, Burning Spear. Thank you to the connections. And that's going to be happen happening within a matter of days. DJ Roy, it was great as usual. And we catch up with you again next as week. Always, Have a great friend. weekend, bro. All Take, right, care. Take care. All the best. Res respect. All right. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. More of what you listen to radio for. And uh, many of you in this generation would not even ever have heard a Burning Spear interview on the radio. He's doing a lot of stuff uh, in Jamaica, and um, he's not one of those who wants to um, uh, blow his own trumpet, but there are some things that he's doing that I think it's important that we highlight in terms of giving back and supporting communities and so on. All of that will be a part of our discussion with the great living legend, Burning Spear, here on The Bridge, 99 FM to the world. All right, we are into the final moments of the show. DJ Audley, we're going to play some more music. And we're uh, going to wrap it up in just about 10 minutes from now, or maybe a little bit less than that. Um, so chug it. They are still moving forward, it seems, with their ca uh, court case against uh, Grammy-nominated Queen of the Dance, All Spice. And uh, we'll see how that one goes. Uh, there's a photograph or video that was published recently of Lady Saw, who, um, uh, who, who, who looked... <laughs> Um, not, not, not very, very beautiful. And uh, there's all kinds of rumors going around that she's coming back out into the dance hall. Nothing like that. Uh, she just uh, did, did her, her nice makeup and stuff, uh, fixed up her hair. Uh, she wasn't wearing her hats like she would normally when she's going to church and so on. And I think it's a part of a, a video that she was about to shoot. So we're looking forward to those new songs from uh, Marion Hall. Sorry, not Lady Saw, but Marion Hall. Best wishes, Marion Hall. Much love every time. We're out of time, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a beautiful morning. It has been a Friday, start of the weekend. Uh, we hope we got it up uh, and going the right and proper way, as you've uh, come to expect. Thanks to our international connections, G987 and uh, Irish Jam Radio. Thanks to our guests. And uh, most of all, we thank you for listening here in Jamaica and around the world to Up and Go with Richard B. this morning. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Spread some love. Follow the protocols. And uh, don't let down your guards, especially at this time. Roddy G is in the building. Morning, Roddy. What's in that cup? Water, I hope. <laughs> Take care, my friends. On behalf of the entire team, have a good weekend. We catch you again, God willing, come Monday morning. This is The Bridge 99 FM to the world. Richie B, the party master, on Up and Go, The Bridge 99 FM.